My name is Nick Vavis. I'm setting out on a journey through the Diocese of Brooklyn and Queens. My goal? To visit eight parishes in one day and show you why we live in a city of churches. In case you missed it, this has been my day so far. I began my day-long journey through the Diocese of Brooklyn and Queens by visiting the seat of the Diocese, St. James Cathedral. I then headed back to nearby St. Boniface before taking a trip into Queens. My tour of Queens included Our Lady of Mount Carmel in Astoria, Our Lady Queen of Martyrs in Forest Hills, and Our Lady of Snows in Floral Park. I then made the long trip back to Brooklyn and to St. John the Baptist Church. I'm on my way to my second to last stop, Holy Innocence. Much like the last church I visited, St. John the Baptist, Holy Innocence has a long history and is undergoing restoration. Well, we made it. Let's go on in and see how the restoration's going. I'm Dr. Al Cressing. I'm the Dr. music Al, director. I'm, Wonderful. I'm fine. And Thank you for coming today. glorious music. I'm like, let me see who's up there in the choir law. Well, glad you visited us. I tell you what, I heard a lot about the history of Holy Innocence, and I'm hoping you can share some history with me. It's rich history and some background and show me around the church. I'd be happy to. Maybe starting with the choir loft. Uh, I'm very proud of this choir loft. Yeah. Uh, this is original to the church. Uh -huh. um, um, and actually, everything that we've been doing here at Holy Innocence started with this organ. Really? It's an E.M. Skinner, an Ernest M. Skinner pipe organ. It's original to the church, and uh, Skinner organs are pretty much known to be the um, Cadillac like of the, the American Royce, huh? organs. Is that right? Yes, they are. Even the piece of music that I was playing is historic. Um, it was written by Michael Green, who was uh, the organist here when I was a young boy. Okay. And I was so inspired by him. I'm still inspired by him. What is that piece um, of music about? Um, this was the, um, this is the glory to God. We still use it at mass occasionally. Uh -huh. we, we use a few mass settings, but we never go away from, from this piece. Um, he wrote it specifically for Holy Innocence. Really? And I sang it as a, as a young boy when I was in the school here. An in interesting story about that, I, we first moved in the neighborhood back on November 1st, 1964. Wow. It was the day before the Johnson Goldwater election, I remember that. Wow, that's that. some history. And um, I lived on Westminster Road, which was uh -huh. five blocks from here, and uh, my mother was um, uh, attempting to unpack from where we used to live, uh -huh. and she said, why don't you take a walk around the neighborhood? And I think um, that was her gentle way of saying, you're yeah, in my else. way, yeah. <laughs> she said, well, it's, it's the Feast of All Saints Day, and there's a church five blocks away. Why don't, why don't you go there? And, and it happened to be a mass going on. It was uh -huh. a 10.30 a.m. mass, as we had back in those days. And, right. I, and I walked in the church, and I heard Mr. Green playing, and I was sold. I was really? sold on the church. I was sold on the neighborhood, really? but specifically I was sold on this organ. Wow. And uh, um, it, it came over to me, and I just said, I, someday I would love to play the organ, yeah. never realizing that someday I might be the it's director really of music here and wow. sitting in his chair. I found all of the original work on this Skinner organ in uh, Hayward, California, of all places, a mm -hmm. suburb of San Francisco, and it helped me get the grant. And we, we got a beautiful grant of three hundred sixty thousand wow. dollars, which totally overhauled this organ. It That's saved amazing. the instrument, and then from there, I when I started on the quest, if you will, to try to restore the organ, mm -hmm. my thoughts were, if I can get the organ restored, maybe I can play a part in restoring this building. And so the organ was really the uh, the springboard, if you will, for right. uh, getting the whole. I can't wait to see the restored. rest of it. 
Well, I've heard you have quite an in-depth knowledge of the rest of this church, and I'd love a tour if you could. I, I would love Show to. Me around, come I the would street. love to. Okay. Thank you. And I will follow you. I will. Okay. This way. There, this is quite interesting. Over here to my left, this is a uh, plaque uh, to the memory of Father William Costello, mm -hmm. who was the founder pastor of this parish. Uh, this uh, parish began on January 2nd, 1909. 1909. And from my understanding, the very first Mass that was celebrated in the name of Holy Innocence mm -hmm. was across the street at a, uh, a lot that we still own. And then plans were underway very quickly to put a temporary structure on this site. Um, it was a wooden structure. Mm -hmm and it seated about 400 people. Wow. And then when, when that went up, plans were already on the way to build a permanent Bigger structure, which was this church that seats 1,100. This church actually grew, well, the parish actually came from Holy Cross. Mm -hmm. uh, there were so many people that moved into this neighborhood that Holy Cross just wasn't large enough to, um, to fit everyone, to serve everybody. Right. So the, this was actually a, parish that evolved from Holy Right, Cross, right, right. Well. And clearly needed, and, obviously. And very needed. The murals in this church uh, also came out of New York City. They were mm -hmm. painted by Tabor Sears which I am told by... Sears and Roebuck Sears? No. <laughs> you know, I thought that too at one time. <laughs> well, you know. I, I don't think so, but you, you never know. I mean, maybe the Sears family, family... Maybe the Sears yeah. family had a, had a part in that. I'll, I'll have to research okay. that and get, that, get back to you on that. Uh, they were out of New York City. Mm -hmm. They are well regarded by people in the know. Mm -hmm. And um, this depicts... Now, I was told that this depicts the holy innocents, mm -hmm. the, the children who were slaughtered by King Herod. That's where we get our name from. Oh, okay. This looks a little, bit, um, a little bit more like Christ the King to me, but most of the depictions of the holy innocents are quite um, graphic. So perhaps uh, when this was painted, it was uh, done in such a way to kind of tone that down a little bit. Mm -hmm. But this particular um, uh, mural was actually donated by the children of Holy Innocence School. They took up a collection and they actually funded this particular really? mural, which is really quite interesting. So now, if it wasn't this, you'd mention that. So the Holy Innocence is the slaughter of children by King Herod. King Herod. And so some of those depictions are if, if you go on the, on the internet and you look at some of the paintings... I they're mean, really they're, graphic? They're really graphic, and mm -hmm. I think it was done in such a way to kind of tone that down a little bit. But it's an absolutely beautiful painting. It's got some uh, issues. Uh, it's a little it's distressed. Faded. I can see it's somewhat faded. Um, now, and what does it take to restore that? Is that well, something that's planned? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is a lot of prayer <laughs> after <laughs> that. After a lot that, of prayer and um, some networking, and uh -huh. I was able to um, get in contact with the uh, Brooklyn Museum right here in town. Okay. There's a conservator there, a very dear, who has now become a very dear friend, and mm -hmm. that's because she heard about what was happening with the organ. So right. how one thing plays into the, the right. next. Right, into the next. And uh, she was very interested in helping us restore these murals, and mm -hmm. she in turn has a friend who is a gifted professor at the University of Delaware. Mm -hmm. And we've uh, been able to contact him, and he was so taken aback by these murals that uh, he is going to be sponsoring a restoration of the murals uh, oh, that's by his great. students. That's great. His doctoral, masters and doctoral level students, mm -hmm. they're going to come here. They're actually going to come here next month and do a little study on them. But the plan is, is that next summer, mm -hmm. and hopefully we'll have everything else done by then, uh, he will restore these murals exactly the way Tabor Sears installed them. In so is it literally they have to erect scaffolding and get up there and... And it, it, it's going to be a cleaning job cleaning. primarily. And they're, they're experimenting with the, the right set of chemicals, combination of chemicals, mm -hmm. 
that are going to restore the murals. What they, happens to your altar when that happens? Does everything get moved forward, or do they build the scaffolding around? They'll have it? to How build the scaffolding that? around because that that, uh, that front altar is permanent. Oh, it is. This mural is playing a very significant role for us mm -hmm. during the next couple of months. Our volunteer from the Brooklyn Museum has been working on discovery of the right combination of chemicals to restore that particular mural mm -hmm. and she feels pretty confident along with the professor from Delaware that once that mystery is solved mm -hmm. uh, we can apply that to the other murals in the church Got it. and what she was able to do was to restore a very tiny piece of the mural Mm -hmm. uh, almost like a swatch of fabric, mm -hmm. uh, just as a test. Well, the gold and the red that came out, that was evident yeah. in that mural, the way it was in 1923. And Spectacular. None of our parishioners have ever seen that. Uh, I couldn't believe wow. it. Wow. I couldn't believe it. That, that's that, a talent, huh? That's that? a talent. That's and, and those colors are, well, those are actually our parish colors, gold and red. Gold and red, gold and the, red parish the parish colors. So I can't wait for that to. That to happen. Well, I think you get a very good sense of the beauty of Holy Innocence Church wow. right in this spot. This is what you see, huh, from the pulpit? This is what wow. this is what the priest sees, the altar servers see, the lector, the song leaders. Mm -hmm. um, I was a song leader here for a number of years as well, and this is what I would see every week, and I, really? it's just breathtaking. Mm -hmm. just, just to highlight a, a few of the areas that I think are really beautiful, really significant, mm -hmm. and a few areas that are really very needy as well uh -huh. as we tried to rebuild this church. Okay. First of all, you have the, the, the beautiful ceiling of the church. Uh, it's rather dark in color. We're trying to see if we can get funding to brighten it mm -hmm. uh, to something similar to the color of the, uh, the, the organ, organ case in the back. Uh, we're 70% uh, masonry, as you could see, at least 70% masonry. Right. Uh, we're looking into getting that restored as well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, not only lighting it up a little bit and cleaning it, but we suffered a, a, a rather significant fire here about 30 years oh, ago. Oh, really? Yes. Where was and, the fire? Uh, it was in the sacristy area. Huh. And it caused some of the, um, I want to say discoloration of some of the murals, and I mean it's evident behind me. The, the the altar here, the sides of the altar are made pretty much of of, of sandstone, mm -hmm. and the masonry itself is limestone. So we're looking to get that uh, repaired. To get that clean. Uh, also, if you look at the the beautiful pews, these yeah. again all original to the church. Uh, we're reaching. We're trying to reach out to like the Carpenters Union in, mm -hmm. in the hopes that they may be able to help us out. Not um, uh, rebuilding the the pews, and really nothing has been rebuilt. All refurbishing. What's very important about this particular church is that we are the the first Catholic church in the history of the Diocese of Brooklyn to okay. be put on the National Historic Registry. Oh, really? And. Um, I'm very proud of that. I yeah, mean, we sure. actually made history in the diocese. Wow. We received a few grants. Because of that, we received uh, $255,000 worth of grants, which are now being used on the roof. Mm -hmm. The roof itself, which you can't see here, you might be able it's to hear a few, a few beatings ah. of the roof upstairs, but they're restoring the roof. They're rebuilding the roof completely. Um, it has to be a copper roof and therefore it's very, very pricey, but mm -hmm. that's exactly the way it was 83 years ago. Has there been an issue with water damage or water oh, coming plenty. in? Or any yeah, stuff? lots of water damage. That can be devastating, I know. And that can that's really what, deteriorate. So I, I'm very proud that we're doing everything we can to mm -hmm. restore the beauty of the church in the way it was when the, first, when the church was first open, mm -hmm. and it really paves the way for the future of this parish. Our children, our grandchildren are going to be able to worship here because we're taking care of the church mm -hmm. now. So from the ground, and all that's the way very up. important, obviously. Very important. So the preservation kind of, of 
all about the church, the building itself, the parish. And, and, and the, goals. the best part of it is that we're not rebuilding anything, we're not changing anything. Mm -hmm. It's all restorative in nature, and that's, that's the most important part. We've been talking about the Stations of the Cross, and mm -hmm. as you know, in the Catholic tradition, there were 14 of them. Yep. This is the first one. Jesus is condemned to death. Mm -hmm. uh, we use this, of course, during the Lent, and when we have our Stations of the Cross. And these uh, are also murals. Mm -hmm. And they were also painted by Tabor Sears, and they're also on our list to get restored this summer. They're not in terrible shape, but they really are tarnished. Mm -hmm. So again, it's going to be very exciting to see them uh, in all their splendor with the colors and the, how the colors are really going to come out. How old are these? How far back do these go? Uh, they the go original? back to the original. The originals. The wow. so, so they're actually well yeah. preserved considering they're, they're that really, far back. These are not really in bad shape. The ones in the front are darker basically because of votive candles. Mm -hmm. In those days they would use votive candles, real candles, and they would emit carbon. Mm -hmm. And we don't do that anymore. The, the votive candles that we use now are, are electric and they're just better. I mean, it's it. less of a fire hazard and, and they don't damage anything the way the old candles did. Got so, it. And then of course the move. confessional. The confessionals here are also original. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, take a look at the wood and the, um, it's very interesting. The very design, ornate. now the priest sits in here, mm -hmm. as you know, and, and take a look at the design work it really over the is confessionals. It's just absolutely it's nice. beautiful. And uh, that's what really interests me about the church, this church so much, is that you just don't see churches that are like this. Mm -hmm. And again, this is original. This is original to the church. And um, even some of the wood around here is so historic. Uh, for instance, I had an architect come in here uh, some time ago and tell me a little bit something about the, uh, the trusses that are on the side. We're, we're under uh -huh. one of the we'll side rooms. Uh -huh. Take a look at the truss that's up there, and actually all of the trusses. Uh -huh. They uh, are very reminiscent of uh, parts of a boat. And he told me that the reason that they did that was the people that our first parishioners here back in 1909 were really mm -hmm. so-called boat people. So really? um, Helmley and Corbett were the original architects of this building. Uh -huh. And they wanted to build something that was, would look or resemble like the people um, who first moved into this neighborhood and something they would feel comfortable with. That reflects their... Their culture culture, their livelihood. And their livelihood, this certainly represents I noticed that. some of the um, churches don't use the confessionals anymore. They actually have rooms where you can sit with the priest and have a conversation. Yes, and that's a con what, conciliatory, what, conciliatory? Yes, and called. one of our confessionals, the next one down, was retrofitted, mm -hmm. that if people wanted to kind of face the priest, they could do that. This one is, and the other three are more are authentic, more of the where traditional. it's anonymous, traditional. But as far as, again, everything that we do here, we're not Mm -hmm. uh, destroying any of the original right. properties. You're of the preserving church. the original everything's stuff. Pre everything's being preserved, and that's the okay. way to go. Before we go any further, though, this mm -hmm. is the perfect time of the day for me to show you one more thing about the stained glass windows. Okay. And it's really my favorite stained glass window okay. in the church. Let Let's go check it out. All right, I'm dying okay. to see it. <laughs> right-hand side of the church, mm -hmm. and take a look at that absolutely gorgeous stained glass up there. Wow. That glass, that stained glass represents the resurrection of Christ. Mm -hmm. Perfect time of the day as the sun is shining through that portion of the glass that depicts that resurrection. Mm -hmm. It's an absolutely beautiful stained glass. This one's pretty much intact, except for just a couple of um, uh, missing pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working with the Venturella Stained Glass Studio in New York City. They are interested in meeting with the uh, professor from the University of Delaware. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we're looking to join forces with them where the University of Delaware will provide the students okay. and Tom Venturella from the uh, Venturella Stained Glass Studios will uh, provide the expertise. So we're having a meeting with 
both parties in a couple of weeks from now. So we're, we're very I excited about I love how the center that. is illuminated from the sun. It's like the light of Christ is coming straight through. That, it really perfect. is beautiful. And this it's is one of your favorite beautiful. pieces, you this said? This is one of your my favorite, favorite pieces. Glasses. I, and you I can, can only see, see it at its proper splendor, if you will, at in the late afternoon the or in the night. early morning when wow. the sun is rising or setting. Uh, and then the tableau beneath that is depicting what? What are we seeing? Uh, that's the Pieta, mm -hmm. and that's very similar to what you would see in um, in Italy. And uh, and if you remember, well, you're too young. I would remember <laughs> this in the 1964-65 well, okay. World's Fair out in Flushing. Uh -huh. uh, they actually have the Pieta on display. Oh, I did know that. I know and that. it's it's not. A, I actually saw it, uh, my wife and I took our first trip to Italy last year. Really? And we got to see the real thing, so to speak. Uh -huh. and, I, and of course I was thinking about Holy Innocence. Uh, and that was a beautiful, that was a whole beautiful experience. In fact, Bishop DiMarzio, uh, who's our, our bishop in Brooklyn, uh, gave us a, a, a gold pass for a semi-private audience with mm -hmm. the Pope. And we were in his presence for about two hours Wow. In, a, in a nicely air conditioned room, I might add. Oh, and good. That was on July good, 4th, good. where it was very, very That's uh, important. Very, yeah. very warm, and we were presented, everybody there was presented by diocese. Uh -huh. So we kind of represented the Diocese of Brooklyn, and that was really nice yeah. of the bishop to do that. We're, I really appreciate it. What about it. You? that water damage I see on the wall coming straight right. down? The water what are damage talking about? in different places in the church, and uh, over here um, to my oh, right, yeah. right in the corner. So that's one of the areas that really needs a lot of work. Actually, all the masonry uh, here needs work. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're hopeful that um, when we celebrate our centennial next year, and it's going to be around the Feast of the Holy Innocents in mm -hmm. 2009, that uh, we'll be able to showcase this church the way it should be. That's, that's our goal, right. with God's help, and with help of people out there, and yeah. our alumni also. Um, that will happen. We're actually having uh, an alumni mass here uh, next month, and uh, there mm -hmm. are quite a few people that have expressed an interest to try to help us out. So it sounds like you have your work cut out for you. Yeah, yeah. You we're not are, there uh, yet, but we're you getting have the there. support behind you to do that. Yeah, and it's it, it's it's been a wonderful ride. I mean, it's yeah. eight years now for me personally, uh, starting with the organ, mm -hmm. moving on here at the church. And then there's the lot across the street that I mentioned to mm -hmm. you earlier. That was the site of the very first mass. Mm -hmm. We're looking to put a community center for the youth and the wow. elderly. And we're trying to get some support from, uh, from the governmental officials and our parishioners. And I, have to I look forward to the final product. I really yeah. do, to the outcome. So, this was, was great. My pleasure. You're sharing the history with me and your music, which was wonderful. Well, thank you for coming by and come back and visit us anytime. I will. I look it's forward to uh, the final product. Sounds I do like too. you guys have a lot of work. We so do. Thank you. Thank you. You got it. Wow, that was spectacular. You know, a great effort is underway to restore this church, and I'm sure it won't be long before it's returned to its original splendor. Well, that's seven down and one more to go. I'm on my way to St. Peter Claver. Come on.